welcome to Blue Harvest Toys. On today's quick history we're going to be talking about Louis Marx. I've actually had a request to talk about this but it was going to be the next one I was going to talk about. So we'll kill two birds with one stone. American toy maker and businessman Louis Marx was born in 1896. By the 1950s Louis Marx and the company was the largest toy company in the world. Often known as the Henry Ford of the toy industry, Marx has served in the US Army during World War I and his passion and interest to in the military endured until his death in 1982. One of the consequences has been that Marx always included plenty of war toys in his catalogues. Marx began his career with Ferdinand Strauss, a manufacturer of mechanical toys. But in 1919 he left and in partnership with his brother David founded the toy company that bought their surname. Soon afterwards he managed to require some of the machine tools and patterns from Strauss now defunct company. I wonder if Ferdinand regretted allowing his young apprentice to leave. Releasing his former mentor's toys under the Marx brand. By 1926 Louis Marx was a millionaire. Not bad for a man who had just left the army as a sergeant. Louis Marx and company employed modern methods of mass production, but also thriftily reusing existing tools and patterns, repurposing current moulds with the simplest modifications to produce new toys. Sounds familiar? Some venerable toy train tooling from the early 1930s, for example, allegedly remained in production until 1972. Unlike those of most other companies, Marx revenues grew during the Great Depression. And against the trend of a time that banks were foreclosing and manufacturers were obliged to decommission plants, the business established news production facilities in economically hard-hit industrial areas, most notably in Pennsylvania. Marx also quickly established himself overseas, developing manufacturing capability in England. By 1937, the company had assets of more than $3.2 million. Louis Marx toured Europe as a special consultant at the end of World War II, advising on new methods of toy manufacturing and helping foreign toy companies deal with the rigours of reconstruction. The networking that naturally resulted in proving enormously valuable and Marx carefully employed the contacts that he had made to forge business partnerships and open new factories in Europe and Japan. By the 1950s the Marx company had 12 factories worldwide. A Time magazine article proclaimed Louis Marx as a toy king and that year the company enjoyed sales of around 50 million dollars. Max toys included tin plate buildings, tin toys, toy soldiers, play sets, toy dinosaurs, mechanical toys, toy guns, action figures, dolls, dolls houses, toy cars and trucks. The famous Rock'em and Sock'em robots and the iconic big wheel tricycle, now enshrined in the National Toy Hall of Fame. Max's more expensive toys were supplemented by a variety of cheaper HO scale and O scale trains and a range of inexpensive toys were sold in dime stores. Max figure play sets were eternally popular with enthusiasts, but throughout the 60s and 70s, the numerous compendiums based both on television shows and real history events proved especially popular. These included classics such as Roy Rogers' Rodeo Ranch and Western Town, Walt Disney's Davy Crockett at the Alamo, Gunsmoke, Wagon Train, and the Battle of Little Bighorn. In the early 1960s, Marx even produced doll's houses with a bomb shelter to ensure the youngsters embraced the principles of duck and cover, the US equivalent to Britain's protect and survive. In 1963, Marx notably capitalised on the beatnik craze, released a series of wacky plastic figurines called Nutty Mads. These fired out toys were designed to, to compete with the kit company Revel, was enjoying tremendous success with the kits that they were licensed for a custom car king Big Daddy Ed Roth and the Hawk models, who had hit gold at turning illustrator Bill Campbell's fantastic creations of a range of automobile mutations that far predated Transformers, the imitable weirdos. Louis Marx retired in 1972, selling his company to Quaker Oats for $54 million. So there you go, hope you learned something new there. Again, if there's any companies or any toys you want me to talk about, please let me know, and I will be only too happy to look into them. So thank you for watching, until next time, may the toys be with you.